Hey traders from around the world, it's Jeremy Alexander Newsom with, of course, reallifetrading.com. I wanted to make a video about a theory that I had recently, and I can't remember if I had this when I was sleeping or watching TV or something, but it just kind of popped in my head because the last few weeks were so strange. And today I was making the announcement in the trading room, which we're in right now. I'm feeling a little bit emotional. I'm feeling like I'm missing out on a lot of trades uh, and I, I can sense that feeling. And anytime I feel like I'm missing out on a lot of trades, that's a great time to stop trading. My theory doesn't really have anything to do with that. I'll explain that in just a moment. But I, I'm, we're in, well not we're, uh, there are some traders in DPLO. Uh, most of them saw this little short term support breakdown, hopped in bearish right there, stopped right about there. So the trade's working, so I'm in this one. But there's a lot of other trades out there that we drew, uh, that I drew, that are just simply not in at all. And I kind of feel like I'm missing out on. So this is one of them. Um, this is another one. So A and A C was a low of the day breakout. Wanted to uh, do a limit sell and place the stop. That would have been a 2R. So I, think, I feel like I'm missing out on opportunities. And that happens to all traders, right? The fear of missing out. Even seasoned veteran traders, you'll, the fear of missing out will give you uh, this emotional surge, if you will, to just make you jump into really, really bad trades, either day trades or swing trades. It's one of those things where if you have that feeling, recognize it, pause, and just wait until your mind is refreshed and you're ready to go and you take the next opportunities as they come. Here's the theory that I have, though. Again, it has really nothing to do with that. I'm just kind of talking out loud a little bit. Here's my theory. I have no idea how to prove this. But there are a lot of different traders in the markets. For example, if you go to um, you know whatever XYZ trading education company.com and you watch their videos, their strategies are gonna be different than my strategies, my strategies are gonna be different than Sally's, and Sally's gonna be different than Rob's, and Rob's gonna be different than Jim, and Jim's gonna be different than Rebecca, because all people are different. So even if you're taught the exact same thing and you learn the exact same way, your charts are gonna be different, your analysis is gonna be different, your perspective is gonna be different, your emotions are gonna be different, your trading accounts are gonna be different. Everything's gonna be different. That's what makes the market. The market's a living, breathing, organic thing traded by living, living breathing, organic people. And it's always complex, it's always changing, but it's always simplistically, organically complex. That's my definition of the market. So my theory is, I think that there are time frames in the market that are counter opposed to certain strategies. And then there are times in the market that work for other strategies. So everyone has the opportunity of making money all the time, depending on whatever your strategy is in different times of the markets. And again, I don't know how to quantify or qualify that statement as a, so this is just a theory, but let me kind of break it down for you. Right in this general area was one of the most profitable few days of my trading career. Pretty much everyone that I interact with on a daily basis was making gobs of money during that time. Everything was great, everything was happy, everyone was, everyone was excited. Not because we're always bearish or anything, just the trades were working. All trades worked, it was strange. Like all the, all the strategies that I usually do, the ones that I trade, the way I trade, my setups, my, my biases, my strategies, my supports, all that kind of stuff, they all worked. Long term, um, this is when a lot of traders were buying and uh, this is when I bought long term. Add to my longer term account down to support, just makes sense to do so. It's what, you know, buy low, sell high. Then, during really this time of the market right here, pretty much all of my day trading strategies just didn't work. It was a grind. The majority of February was like working out in a gym, doing the exact same workout every single day. Just doing curls. It's just a grind. It's boring. It really was not exciting. It was chop fest. Our day trading strategies really just were not blending that well. Now, were there other traders like that? Yes, there were a lot of other day traders who were trading in that same time period, traders who I look up to a lot, traders who have helped me and mentored me, who also weren't making money. But then there were other traders in the market 
that were killing it. And I was like, man, how are they getting these entries? I was like, wow, this is fantastic. I'm so happy for them. Their strategies are working really, really well for them. Then recently, really right about here, right about there, my strategies were, my day trading strategies were working very, very well. Uh, I went on a crazy winning streak, still on it. Every trade that I was placing worked, and right now I'm eight for eight in the day trading world. So I think there's an interesting ebb and flow between times when strategies may work and times when your strategies don't. But as long as you stick to them, as long as you stick to your guns, stick to your principles, stick to your strategies, mitigate risk, lose small during the bad times and win big during the good times, you'll come out positive um, at the end of the time frame that you're looking for. I have a true example of that. One of my Nashville traders, one of my good buddies, Sean, you'll be seeing him a lot more videos. Uh, we're really doing a lot of hands-on coaching and work through, uh, through his trading. And we created his trading plan. He's never had a physical trading plan before. Day three into his trading plan, he broke it. I mean, day three, he broke his plan. <laughs> Might have even been day two. It was really early on. And his pain was no coffee for a month, which sounds, uh, it's not that bad. Listen, this guy drinks three cups of coffee a day minimum. He's a coffee aficionado. He could own a Starbucks. Like he, or or another barista. He, he, he knows coffee. He literally has a coffee shop in his office that he owns. True story. So... He had to go an entire month without coffee. Now, not only does it sound bad just not drinking coffee, but he also had a newborn baby during that time. <laughs> so he had to go to work after getting like two hours of sleep, you know, because the brand new newborn baby, Claire Bennett, uh, and he didn't have coffee. So it just made it even worse. So his plan is back to full in effect, and I'm sure he's not going to break it because now it's like two months without coffee. And uh, I don't think he wants to go through that torture again. But what I'm trying to say is, he ended up being down, so let's say in the red, like the red zone, right? This little red circle, if, if you will, which comprises pretty much all of February and the last part of January. He was down about uh, 7R or so in his trading, approximately, until the green, right? And the green, he broke through, he lost small, and in just the last few days with good risk mitigation, you make... 7R times three, I think was his run or something. He had a lot of, he had a string of really good wins and ended up positive on the month, 5.7R. It's a huge thing. I mean, that's fantastic, right? Being positive in the month, that's his first month ever. First month ever profitably day trading. Is it because of real life trading? No. It's fully because of him and his trading plan and the simple fact that he had the discipline to, um, to follow it and when he didn't follow it he you know invoked his plan he invoked his pain lever and that's simply just that's what discipline is so i think my theory is there's really times in the market that benefits different people in different ways because during this blue time and really during this blue time as well my other strategies my other bread and butter swing trade strategies some of them worked and some of them didn't. My option plays didn't really work that well, right? My options, why why sell options? Those strategies didn't work, but my directional trades worked very very well. Then in red, when I didn't have a good day trading at all, like it just really wasn't phenomenal. Anything to write home to mom about? All of my swing trading options, um, trading plan, you know, the put sales, credit spreads, they all worked. So now in green, my day trading is working, but now the swing trading options, my, my credit sale, credit spreads, put sales, things of that nature, some of them working, some of them aren't. I think that there are times in the market where everyone can be benefited. It's just at different times. And I think that's an interesting theory. Again, I don't know how to qualify that or quantify that, but really what I'm trying to get at, the real point and the message of the video is simply this. If you're coming through a stretch where your trades seem not to be working, but you've done the same thing that you've done for a long time, so you got to be consistent. That's the only way to measure your real growth as a trader is consistency. 
Because in the market, if you're a real life professional trader, your objective or one of your objectives is to remove variables from trading. Remove variables. Variables in the market are countless. So we need to remove as many as we can. And even though there's gonna be a lot left, it, the things that we can control, we cannot control what the market does, but we can control our risk, we can control our stop, we can control our entry, we can control how many trades we place, we can control how many trades we don't place, we can control when we trade in the day, we can control how we feel or if we trade, how we trade, when we feel, what we feel. So we can control those things. So we can't control the market. So you have to be consistent so for example, if you say, let's, let's, let's go out a strategy that you did in that red time frame. Let's just say your strategy didn't work, whatever it is, if it's day trading, if it's swing trading, my thought would be go find someone who is doing whatever strategy it is that you're doing. Again, I'm not saying real life trading is the only way to trade properly. It's really not the case at all. There are countless, literally countless of strategies, countless of traders out there who get paid to trade the markets. The ones who don't get money, who don't make money are the ones who usually cannot be consistent for long periods of time. Now, granted, there are times where your strategy might just be a little bit off or your market direction might be a little bit off and I can understand that, so that can be tweaked. So that's what I'm mentioning is if, again, in red right here, if you traded in you know January and lost a lot of money trading your strategy, find someone who trades your strategy or your system or your method and find that person who was profitable during the time that you weren't profitable and compare notes, measure, ask questions, say, hey, why did, you, why did you have different results than I did? And then find out what they say and again, try to get back on the road to consistency because if you always change strategies, if you always bend to the market's whim, if you're always letting the market control you, you will lose money trading. Consistency is key, discipline is key, and understanding that we have zero control over the market, we have to control ourselves, and, and understanding that there are time periods in the market where certain strategies just do not work. Doesn't mean you have to change those strategies. You'll, you, my, my main theory stipulates that we have no idea when those times are gonna happen, because really for all intents and purposes, I'm looking at this time frame right here and we should have just absolutely wrecked it day trading. But there were a lot of day trades that just really just didn't work. And it's not that we weren't going bullish. We did have bullish day trades in this time period. We've really placed a lot of bullish day trades in this time period. And even as crazy bullish as the market has been, I think our bullish day trades are like 0 for 7 in that time period. Weird, right? It's strange. But anyway, if I remember appropriately, uh, this time frame, which is very similar to this time frame, this time frame worked very well with bullish trades. This one, not so much, <laughs> or at least not yet. Now there are some swing trades that are working. So again, swing trading, day trading, two different strategies, right? It might be the same outcome, right? You still might be buying stock at $1 and selling it at two or buying an option at $1 and selling it to, you might still have the buy low, sell high mentality, but day trading and swing trading is, in my personal opinion, as different as driving a car and racing in NASCAR. It's just two different things. I think understanding how day trading works gives you a very, very good perspective on swing trading because you're building from the ground up. A lot of people usually start with swing trading and they go down to the granular level of day trading. That's the most common methodology and there's nothing wrong with that. My methodology is actually try to teach people day trading first and then give them the really, really big picture. It's a weird, it's a different take for sure, but it helps build the sense of fractals from the beginning because if it can work small, it can work in a big way. And you just simply implement the very simple theories, buy low, sell high, sell high, buy low, mitigate your stops, trade your plan, be consistent. So that's really the theme of the video today is be consistent. If something isn't working for you, find out from someone else where when it did work and where it did work doing the same things that you do. And if you don't know, ask. Ask the question, hey, 
What strategies are you trading? How'd you do during this time frame? Here are my results. Be open, be vulnerable, share your losses, share your wins, ask questions, measure, grow, be consistent, be disciplined. That's my theory. Thanks so much for watching this video. Traders from around the world, you guys absolutely rock. Have an absolutely fantastic 2016. Looking forward to it. It's going to be fun. Uh, really excited to see what the SPY does right around this 200 mark. Very, very strong key level. And uh, I think we make it up there. Let's see what happens from here. You guys absolutely rock. And until next time, love life, live life, and trade it to you.